What's up, everyone? David Seven Skies here, broadcasting from the Seven Skies Mansion. This is cool. I'm back on Anjuna Beats. Who would have thought? I am going to show you how I made my new track, Zao, today. But I'm also going to be reading your questions. So, um, so yeah, hopefully I'll be able to do everything and hopefully everything will work. Cool. All right, guys, let me switch into Ableton mode. This is the project of Zao. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the bass just to make sure that everything sounds as it's supposed to. So I'm going to mute my mic for a second and I'm going to play. And if it's all perfectly fine, please just let me know in the chat. All right, three, two, one, let's go. Alrighty, I think we're ready to go. Ah, cool. So, where should we start? I am probably going to start with the drums. So we're just going to get those out of the way. Uh, they're possibly the least interesting things. Um, so let's get the drums out of the way. Now, you can see here that I have two drum channels. Uh, reason is, this is the actual drum channel, what you see here. And what you see here is what you hear in the final song, which is a stem of the drums that have been recorded through my distressor that is right here. I have a rack with compressors and analog goodness. Um, so I got my drums, I run, their, run them through the uh, distressor, record them into live, and that's it. Uh, I just left them there because just in case I needed to go back and uh, you know fix something. But what you hear in the final song is just this giant stem over here that has everything. So let's just play some of the drums. Which are very basic, by the way. Super basic stuff. Uh, I think the fun stuff, when it comes with the drums, there's there's a couple things that I really like about these drums. Um, very important in the song, although they're not particularly loud or present, are the stadium claps, which are this one. They just give this like arena or festival vibe to the song. Just make it sound like bigger. Um, something I kind of like to do and uh, if you know me you know that I mean yes I come from the trans world but then I shifted completely and I went to the more like EDM big roomy house stuff and uh, and yeah now I have this song on Engine Beats which um, I will explain in in a bit why I made a song uh, on Engine Beats, why I'm uh, back on Engine Beats with, uh, with this song. Uh, but yes, yeah, so basically this song has a lot of influences from, from what I've been doing in the past few years after I departed from Engine Beats. Oh, departed, that sounds, that sounds serious. And, uh, and yeah, so th you're going to hear a lot of EDM, big room uh, kind of uh, elements in this song. Now, these uh, stadium clubs are... My personal favorite in this in this song, I really love the vibe and the atmosphere that they give. But I really like uh, this little noises as well. Which are super simple, but if I play them with the bass and the kick,
The drums are very, very simple, uh, very minimal. This is the only part where they go full on. And even in this case, there are really not that many. I mean, if you open the whole project as one, two, if we can call it two, three, four, five, six, seven-ish uh, channels for drums, which is something very, very, very unusual for, for me, especially when I used to make trends, I, I usually had like 20 or more channels for drums. But uh, once again, I am sort of coming from a different world right now. So drums tend to be a little bit more minimal. Uh, let me read some of the question. Love your work. I saw your Pyramid Masterclass. Oh, thank you. What do you look for when you're running your drums through the distressor. Now, I have a pretty standard settings uh, uh, that I used in a couple tracks and it worked. And so I just sort of kept that setting. It's funny, funny thing, I actually changed it today because I'm working on a new song and that particular setting doesn't really work. Uh, but my distressor is normally parallel compressor more than anything. So it doesn't give a particularly drastic dif it doesn't make a particularly drastic difference um it just fattens the sound a little bit especially with the tail it makes it a little bit longer a little bit more in your face um so normally the release uh what was it i forgot it because it's a different setting uh i may actually have it here because this is what i do usually yes so what i normally do this is one thing that I sort of invented, which I'm super proud of. Every time I use a hardware compressor, I open the uh, software uh, emulation or whatever you want to call it, and I copy the setting the way that I don't have to take pictures and stuff. So if I change the setting on the hardware, I normally have it stored in the project, right? So this is the drum channel. And if you see in the drum channel, there's a distressor, which is turned off because I don't need it. The only reason I need it is to check the setting. So this is the setting. Uh, now, I know for a fact that this 6.1 is wrong for some reason. Uh, I always have it at 4.1 ratio. 5 dB of input, 7 millisecond of attack. So quite slow so it gives a little bit of a snap medium release five milliseconds uh now the settings that i have right now for this new project is at zero it's super fast and then uh normally i get like 10 to 12 db once again this is um this is a parallel compressor uh parallel compression so uh even if i squished squash the sound a lot it doesn't really matter because as you can see it's mixed in just a little bit so this is the settings that you hear on my analog um distressor it's, it's exactly the same uh cool so yeah if i play the entire oh shit luis torres is here yo <laughs> if i play the entire like full-on drum part this is what you get And if I play it without the distressor, you can hear it's a little bit more in your face. It sounds louder, but it's not just loudness, especially if you listen to the tail of the hi-hat and the ride, you can hear that it's a little bit lifted, uh, which is what this particular, particular setting does. It lifts the tail of the sound. I was asking about the clap. The clap is actually, I used it in uh, Neverland. I used it in my song Neverland. Not this one, this is Fisher Hi Hat. Uh, where is it? Is it this one? No. Oops, I need to do this.
No, actually, no. This is not the, the, the clap that I used in Neverland. This is just a Kashmir. Just a Kashmir clap. Uh, now, fun part on the drums is the actual drop, which has some really fun, um, has some really fun drums. So let me play it. And all this, all this stuff is done to interact with the bass. Now we're gonna we're gonna focus on the bass later on. But basically, let me just play it. And the reason why the percussion and the drums are so minimal in this part, it's because I wanted to give all the space possible to the bass. Uh, in this case, in this particular part of the song, the user, sorry, not the user, the listener, <laughs> the listener has to focus exclusively on the bass. But at the same time, if it's just bass, let me just play it without the drums, it just becomes too boring. You hear basically nothing interesting happening, right? I mean, the bass is cool and all, but it's just missing some sort of ear candy. And this is what these drums are doing. Uh, They're just sort of act as, a, as an ear candy. So yeah, I'm just like looking at what's happening in the chat. Your music got me into producing, Lewis. See what you do to people? You get to produce, you get them to produce. It's not a good thing, man. You're gonna hate your life in a in a bit. Much love to Seven Skies, also. Thanks, thanks, man. Uh, now I'm just gonna since Lewis is here, and uh, and uh, he knows this story. Uh, before he goes, I don't know how long he's gonna stay, but this live stream is gonna be like a couple of hours. Before he goes, I just want to show you guys the name of the main base, which is. <laughs> Per state cavity base. Now I already I already explained it in a different in a different live stream. But before and before anyone is like, what the hell, what the hell is that name on the base? Before anyone asks, whoop, someone subscribe to my uh, to my Twitch. It's weird because it shouldn't do that. Anyway, uh, the reason why this name is because I was working with Lewis on uh, on some stuff right and he asked me for the nastiest most disgusting bass possible right and i got to work and i was just like making this bass and i was like basically adding every possible distortion that i have on my computer and the bass that came out was so ugly and disgusting really that i was like okay how do i call this thing and uh and so i was like i was like what's the worst thing that can happen to a person and i was like well i guess like having a prostate inspection while having cavity pain could probably be like a pretty terrible thing like you know you can imagine and uh, and so i was like all right i'm just gonna call this cavity prostate base and uh and <laughs> yeah it's funny because we didn't use it in that particular song but uh but yeah when i was working on this song i was like whoop, new subscriber uh when i was working on this song i was like ah oh, damn i should use the prostate bass and uh and yeah damn the the alert stuff is super loud the bass line makes me feel so right someone subscribed thanks guys the the, the prostate cavity bass has a lot uh it's 
also frozen because this is what makes my computer go completely bonkers. Uh, so I'll explain it later. But uh, yeah, drums are almost done. There's only one thing that's in the intro that I'm super proud of. And this like, it's this like little serum thing, which is from one of my presets. Now, I am not entirely sure this is going to work, but I'm going to try it anyway. Let's see if it works. It does not. It does not. Anyway, um, basically, it's from my uh, serum library, Brazil. If you guys want to check out my sounds and all my serum library and all that kind of stuff, check www.standalone-music.com. And there's a lot of the Brazil... God, I need to turn this down a little bit. Um, there's a lot of this pack in this song, the Brazil pack, because I thought it was like, it would be really cool to make a trans song with a Brazilian bass pack. Uh, but anyway, this is the sound. It's very, sim very simple. It's just a noise that sort of plays as a shaker, and he has a flanger on it to make it interesting. And that is about it. Oh, no, there's one more thing. There's the tom, which is the same tom that I used in my song with Tiesto, My Frequency. It plays a different uh, sequence, but it's the same sound. And this goes along really well with the bass line. I bought Fishbird and the first lead is literally one to one to losing it. Yeah, I guess that was the point. Standalone music freaking rocks. Hell yeah. I think we should focus on the bass. Bass, the bass is a lot, uh, especially the intro bass. The intro bass is a lot, a lot of stuff. Uh, a lot of serum. Once again, a lot of this stuff is from my pack Brazil. Although the main, main sound it's just a, it's just the init sound uh, changed to a square wave. Uh, cool. So let me just play this again. As as I was saying, this like reverse sound helps with the transition a lot. So I'm gonna play without, and then I'm gonna play it with. So you can hear uh, you can hear that when it loops, when the four bars stop, without the reverse bass, sort of like I don't know, it just sounds like a bad loop. Uh, well, let me play it with the reverse sound, and now you hear what I mean. You hear how it takes you from the end of the loop to the beginning of the loop again. It just helps the transition um, in a much nicer way. It all sounds more natural. It's, it flows much better. So yeah, that's why this sound is very, very, very important. Now, let me, let me talk about the donk. Because the donk is very, very important in this song. Now, the donk is from uh, the American Kremlin pack. Now... This pack is branded standalone music but because we were doing it together and it was um, it was supposed to be on standalone music but then Splice wanted it exclusive and so we gave it to Splice. So if you have the American Kremlin pack, it's going to have a different name but it's SynthShot 01C. Um, you can find this back on Splice and this is the dunk sound. Yeah, you probably heard it to the mic. I'll, I'll, I'll go back to the basses in a second. I'm just gonna go play the donk and then we'll go back to the bass. Very important in this sound is the art acoustic that fades the entire thing.
I love this thing. Uh, now there's a couple cool little tricks in the Donk channel that I'll explain in a second. I love this reverb plugin. Yeah, for trance and like big spacey stuff, it's the absolute best. Art Acoustic wins. Uh, now, uh, I want to explain to you guys this thing. As you can see here, there's a utility which keeps turning on and off and the gain is all the way down. So basically when the utility is on, there's no sound. When the utility is off, there is sound. So basically this is a do-it-yourself mute button kind of thing. The reason is, it's because I have this donk sound going through a big reverb and I want the tail of this reverb to last exactly this long and I want it to cut right as the kick comes in. So. So you can hear that it cuts when the kick plays. Let me just show it to you. So you can hear that the tail goes away. Now, if I put the gain back at zero, even if this uh, utility turns on, you'll hear that it doesn't mute anything because the gain is at zero. And you'll hear the big difference. Uh, I'll play with the bass as well, because that's where you really grasp the difference. Uh, but listen how it sounds without that. So you hear how it bleeds into the rest of the song. And that doesn't really help, especially with the whole bass thing, because you don't really stop the flow. You just keep things going. And sometimes it's good, and sometimes it's really, really bad. So let me play the bass and the kick and the dunk without the utility on. You hear how this, the donk reverb keeps going and it just doesn't leave any space for the stuttery bass? Well, if I revert it back to what it was, so gain all the way down so it acts as a mute button, listen how it sounds now. You hear how it just like sucks it all away and it just like stops the entire thing, leaves space to the t -t 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 stuttery sound and then it comes back in with a lot of reverb and then it cuts away. What you can do, I mean, you can render it as audio. Probably Lewis left already, but Lewis would render it to audio and he would simply cut away the extra tail. I am super OCD with this kind of stuff. And I want to have everything uh, playing live so I can uh, go back and fix everything if I, um, if I have to. But yes, that's very, very important in this, uh, in this song as well. Now, let me play the bass again because you probably couldn't hear it before because uh, it was through the mic. Okay, so main, main bass. Super simple. Then we have Serum Brazil kind of stuff. Then we have the more Brazilian sound. Then we have the Koyu bouncy sounds like a bouncy ball kind of thing and then we have the clickiest one this is 
possibly the most important layer of the entire stuttery uh, bass part. Which is what gives character to the entire thing. If I mute this layer, you'll hear that there's a huge difference. If I put it back in, Can you show the group channel from the base? Yes, I'll show it to you in a second. Uh, one last thing that I want to show you guys. It's this fill uh, stuff that I was talking about before, before we figured out that my base wasn't working, uh, that my audio wasn't working. So uh, you can see here, I have some of the layers that come back in and then go away and then come back in again. Uh, this is done so that I just wanted this part to sound like it was sort of broken. So I put pieces there and then I take them away and then I put them back in and this is how it sounds. And I really like that. Uh, then, oh, actually, yes, there's this uh, other sound that comes in in the second part of the intro which is the higher uh, square sound, which is this one. Same preset as the bass. The only thing is that there's a Valhalla room that uh, sort of, it's, I think it's 100%. Yes, it's at 100%. And it just gives this weird room to the sound. And if I remove the Valhalla, you'll hear it sounds very different. If I put it back in, it just sounds more, I don't know, phasey and organic in a way. And I really like that. Now the bass uh, group channel, so there's two, there's intro bass group, uh, and then there's the actual bass, which has the cavity prostate bass. We'll talk about that later. Uh, so the intro bass doesn't really have anything going on, just a kickstart for sidechain. And then it has some filter that comes in and out uh, depending on the part of the song. So here you'll hear, you'll see that it's turned on. Yes, because this is the build. This is the first build up. Uh, then there is a high pass as well, which I don't really know where it is. EQ8, I think it's over here. That lift, bro, yeah, that lift is pretty nasty, right? I love it. Uh, cool, so yeah, that's that's just the, the, the intro group channel. And then this is the entire bass uh, bus, and it only has this plugin, which if you know me, this I'm obsessed with this plugin. I use it all the time, and uh, I might explain it a little bit better later when I explain the mixing of the song, but basically what I normally do, uh, the main elements in my tracks usually go inside uh, buses. Now this song, I was a little lazy and it's not particularly well organized. I mean, yes, you have, you have the drums, you have the bass, uh, you have the pads, you have the leads. Normally I have way less channels, uh, are sort of like free from groups i normally have like five to eight groups and everything is in there well to in, in this particular project it's a mess it's like you know drone and drums and and donk on its own and piano on its own and lead melody on its own all that stuff anyway basically what i do 
I have a plugin alliance SSL open in each and every bus that I have. And sometimes it doesn't really even do much. Like for example, in this case, it's just gives a little bit of highs and a little bit of low cut, like 24 Hertz. Um, but the reason I use it actually is this thing. This thing basically simulates an entire SSL console. So basically you can have 74 different channels within the plugin within the project. And I'll explain it a little bit later, but basically every number you see here, I can, I can switch them. And every number basically emulates the character of an SSL channel. And you can have up to 74. So it's like having 74 different SSLs inside your plugin. And you can randomize all the instances within the project. So each and every instance of the plugin has its own character. And that just sounds amazing. Just gives a little bit of more analog vibe to the song. Who cares about organization when you're getting a track together? It's all about the sound, man. Absolutely true. But you have to consider that this song is finished. Now, if, if I was producing this song right now, it would be okay. This song is finished though. And before I finish my song, I normally organize them together. Because I'm a little bit OCD, but mostly because it's easier to mix them. It's just quicker. It's just more organized. So yes, it doesn't really matter how you organize your songs as far as the music is good. But at the same time, for organization purposes and just, you know, mixing and that kind of stuff, for me, it's easier if the project is more organized. Every, everything is so tidy and labeled on your project. Uh, yes and no, this project is actually messy. I'm a very messy person. But when it comes to projects, I'm super, super tidy. But this project is actually very messy. Let's keep working on the base. Let's go to the let's go to prostate cavity base. <laughs> and uh, sadly, I cannot show you guys what's in this thing. I mean, maybe I can. I can, yeah, not really. But basically, this has three different synthesizers. Uh, there's an operator, then there is a silent, and then there's a serum. And as you can see here in the instrument rack, that's where they are. So basically it's one channel with sub instruments within the channel. And so I created the layering there. Reason is because I was working with Lewis, again, uh, not on this song, but Lewis and I was working, we're working on some projects together and he asked me to make a super nasty bass. The easiest way to make it was to put everything inside a rack and just send him the rack. And that's why uh, the, uh, the prostate cavity bass, it's structured that way. Normally I would have layers like, um, like in this case, you have serum one, serum two, serum three. This particular bass, because it was designed to be uh, shared with someone else, uh, was designed this way. And then when I was working on the song, I was like, oh, I should use the prostate cavity bass. <laughs> and, uh, and so I had the, the thing just ready to go and I just dragged it. And that's it. Let me just play how the bass sounds. And this is without the sub and then I'll play the sub as well. So nasty. Especially here where it goes down. All right. Uh, yeah, so basically, once again, this part of the song, I wanted to, to just like be incredibly nasty disgusting mean evil and everything it's just, i just want to punch people in the face when i hear this part <laughs> which is exactly what i wanted 
Um, if you feel like you want to punch people in the face when you he- listen to this part of the song, that's uh, that's exactly what I wanted to do and the emotion that I wanted to um, share with people. Not because I'm particularly mad at anyone. I just felt like it. Uh, and uh, And yeah, so the concept of this was like, let's do something that's like, Psy trancy uh that basically recalls the intro the the whole sound which is what the listener wouldn't necessarily expect but once it comes to that part it's like okay i get it you have uh the intro has this like and the drop has this it makes sense it's a different sound but it's the same pattern so it's kind of unexpected, but at the same time, it makes sense. Now, what it doesn't make sense is when I hit you with this, right? Now, this part doesn't make sense. This part is the part that nobody expects. And I remember when I showed the song to like my friends and, and even Lewis, he played the drop and he was like, holy crap, this is insane. And then he got to this part and he was like, dude, what the F? Like, this is like so hard. And, uh, and this is why I love this part. It almost sounds like hard style in a way because the bass is so long and it sort of blends in with the kick. So you go from here. Right? It's so mean. So yeah, I just love it. I just love that it's so unexpected. And then, yeah, I guess you still don't really expect it. After this whole part, you go melodic, right? And then this like super mean bass starts to follow along with the melody. And it's still mean, but it's not as mean because there's a melody. It's a nice arpeggio melody, trancy melody. So it just sort of like calms down a little bit but it's still mean and it's, I don't know. I just really like the idea. Uh, so yes, this bass has a lot of things happening. Um, and then there's the sub, which is, sub is my baby, is my get low synthesizer. It's actually a contact library, not really a synthesizer. And that plays the sub. Uh, someone's asking, uh, is it sidechain? Because it would take away the thickness of it. No, 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 it is, it is sidechain. If this thing wasn't sidechain, this song would sound terrible. Um, so yes, it is sidechain. Not a crazy, super obvious sidechain, but it is uh, sidechain. So now we got get low on the sub, and this is how it sounds. super thick um bass line now if you guys have um super thick sub sorry if you guys have get low and you're wondering what preset is this this is in the factory bank and it's called diablo this is the sub uh that it's playing and then obviously there's some eq takes away all the high frequencies saturator and then more filter that takes away what the 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 high harmonics that the saturator might have added i'm not sure it added anything but yes i just like just to make sure uh so if i play if i play both the sounds both layers the sub plus the um the prostate cavity bass now it's i have to call it prostate cavity bass just too funny um i'm just gonna mute the sub so you can hear the difference It's a very, very, very subby sub. So you might not be able to hear it if you are on like crappy headphones or laptop speaker. 
Do you have a decent uh, speaker setting, uh, speaker setup? You're gonna hear a bit of difference. It, it just adds a lot of weight, but it's a very low subby weight. Um, so yeah, it's subtle, but it's not subtle. Uh, cool. So we got the drums out of the way. We got the bass out of the way. That only took an hour. Uh, I didn't really show the kick. The kick is very simple. I was run through a distressor, so that's why it's a giant uh, stem. And this is how it sounds. Kind of typical Anjuna kick. I think this is actually the same kick that I used in Rubicon with Super 8 and Tab. I am pretty sure it is. It just sounds a little different because once again, I run it through the distressor and the distressor is really good with transients. So you have this like very pointy attack, which almost sounds like I layered it with uh, a Psytrance kick, but I didn't, it's just compressor. What should we do? I can just quickly do the fills. They're not particularly special, but let's just play them for the sake of it. Pretty sure it's all like Kashmir stuff. Um, Yes, it is, beside this part, which has some samples from my uh, FX pack, which I really like that pack. Not, not, not saying that because it's mine, but I, just, I don't know, it's just super useful. And that is what basically comes in before it goes full on melodic on the drop. Very, very, very important stuff besides the melodies and the sub uh, and the bass and all that kind of stuff. It's this RP pluck, which is a very simple silent one uh, preset. No, actually, it's not even a preset. It's just something that I did. It's just the init sound set to square. Uh, let me read some of the question, by the way. What's your preference on panning sound? Do you do hi hats left? Uh, claps right and that kind of stuff. Not really, for some reason. I tend not to like when something is hard panned. I like it when it's done by others. When it's done by me, I hate it for some reason. So what I normally do, I have the classic sample delay where you delay the right channel with the left channel and so it sounds super spread out. And sometimes it just sounds like it's either more to the right or more to the left. Uh, but normally my drums tend to be in the center. What I would do is I might pan some layers. So for example, uh, I have two claps, maybe one I can pan it to the right, one I can pan it to the left. So you get this like more stereo sound and it also cleans up the, the mono, mono side of, um, not, not the mono side, the mono of the song. But yeah, I'm not really great at panning. I use the auto pan a lot and you'll see it here in the project. I use the auto pan like crazy. As for panning, if you look at my stuff, you see everything is in the center. There's this thing, it's on the right. Rides, yes, sometimes I have rides on either left or right, but that's about it. You see everything, it's basically in the center. Uh, all right, let's go back to the Plucky sound. Plucky sound is very important. Plucky sound is very important for the transitions. Just one more question. I just started learning. You got any beginner advice for me? Uh, just do stuff, really. Experiment, check videos on YouTube, but also don't rely too much on videos on YouTube. I think the bad thing of videos on YouTube, videos on YouTube and tutorials and all that kind of stuff are amazing and they are so valuable, especially if you're starting up. At the same time, the problems with videos on YouTube is that they go straight to the point. And sometimes it's good because if you're, if you're trying to figure out something and you need to know it quick, it's, it's good if they go straight to the point. The problem is 
they tend to miss the process behind it. And when you don't have, when you don't learn the process behind it, sometimes you basically don't know the entire process to get there. So if you learn something and they tell you, oh, if you need this square sound, for example, like this plucky sound, right? Right, on some YouTube videos, they'll tell you, okay, take this, take it down, take the cutoff here, put the cutoff uh, envelope here, put the pitch up here, and you get this sound, which is cool. You got the sound that you were looking for, but if you have to redo it again, you are probably gonna have to go back to YouTube and check out how to do it again because you didn't understand what was going on. You just followed some instruction. So my advice is try to learn as much as possible from YouTube, but also try to understand the process behind things. Because when you understand the process, you know how to get there without having to go on YouTube every time and try to relearn everything from scratch. That is very important for me. And this is why people tend to hate, either hate or love my tutorial on YouTube because they're very long. I do talk a lot. But I also want to explain the entire process because I want people to understand and not just get what they want. That's the problem with today's stuff, right? Everybody can just do everything within a second, but doing and knowing how to do it, it's different. Sometimes you only need to do it without knowing how to do it, but if you need to do it multiple times, it's just better to know how to freaking do it. Anyway, I hope that was somehow helpful. That's an amazing advice. Thank you so much. I'm glad it was helpful. Uh, okay, so let's go back to the plucky sound. I'm not going to explain the sound design on the plucky sound, but it's very simple. It's just a square um, wave. Now, there's a lot going on with this pack, uh, with this plucky sound, by the way. So first of all, uh, it obviously opens the filter, the filter starts closed and then it opens up as you get to the middle of the breakdown and also the um, middle of the, of the build. But also what happens is that it fades into a big reverb. So here now, you see now that the dry level is going down. And it's disappearing inside the main reverb. And what you're left with is just the pure sound of the reverb. And that's very, very handy when you want to fade stuff out, but with style in a way, and not just like with a filter. You know, everybody's used to the sound of a filter being closed or a fade, just volume going down. And I would say with the Data Life plugin, everybody's starting to get used to the fade in and out of the reverb but for some reason the fact that you have dry and wet on their own in the art acoustic reverb it just gives a completely different uh vibe uh, to the effect because normally what you get is a dry wet right you have 100 percent wet or 100 percent dry and you balance between that it's just one fader in this case you have two uh knobs and the sound to me is a little different, especially because you can have the wet signal louder than it would normally be. And it just sounds super, super good. Now, the cool thing, Andrew Bayer actually, like, he, he texted me. I was like, dude, the thing that you did with the plug was amazing. Did you use a distortion? He was like, nope, that's a different trick. Uh, it's this plucky delay thing. So if you follow my uh, streams, on my Twitch, by the way, if you guys don't follow me on Twitch, uh, it's Seven Skies Music. I stream regularly, so be sure to follow me on Twitch. If you follow me, you know that uh, I do this 
a lot. And basically what I do is I run stuff through a very big uh, delay with a lot of feedback. And what that does after it feedbacks for a long time, it's, there you go, someone followed me. It starts to distort and more people following me. <laughs> and the more it distorts, the more it creates harmonics and harmonics on top of harmonics on top of harmonics you get this like woo you get this hopefully i can keep talking without the bump, bump. nope i cannot talk i need to lower the sound let me see if this one lowers it uh there you go this is quieter now so more harmonics and more harmonics and you get this like very organic and very heart rich harmonically Harmonically rich sound. Now, I'm I'm gonna play it for you guys. I'm just gonna turn the alert box sound way down. Yeah, I know, I know, I, I, I know I asked for it. I was like, uh, should I say it? Because if I say it, a lot of you are gonna start following me. So I'm gonna play it for you guys. Let's go. Right, so this sound is basically the plucky harp run through a huge delay with a long feedback and then I just recorded the entire sound and I just put fades in it. But this sound is super cool because it helps so much with the transition between the first part of the break and the second part of the break. So the part with the pads and the part with the arpeggio leads. So I'm just gonna play that part and I'm gonna play the arp, the pluck, and the donk, cause the donk is super important as well. So that's this, this part, this little bridge over here. It's very interesting. It just makes you think that the song is gonna start build, but instead it just stops again and it starts with the, the melody, uh, arpeggio sound which I'll play in a second. I also feel like I should play the pads so you get the entire experience. This is so good. And I normally don't like what I do, but this was like, this was actually done on a live stream on Instagram, I think. I've done this song in uh, doing a live stream on Instagram. Uh, the Donk once again does this like cool trick with the, um, with the art acoustic where the wet chan uh, yeah, the wet signal goes super loud and the dry signal goes down. So let me just play it. And it just washes out. What type of music do you produce today? I was listening to your music since 2007. I was my Juno Beat hero. You did so many good unforgettable track. Uh, in the link, the leader your call up with Static Blue. Is this still producing music? I, I didn't delete any. I didn't delete any of this song with Static Blue. Unless, uh, I, I think they're handled different. I think... I think Seven Skies and Static Blue was an actual artist name, so they're not linked to me. I'm not entirely sure, though. Uh, is he still producing music? I have no idea. I don't think so, though. We haven't talked in a while. We're still, we're still friends. Like, we talk sometimes. We catch up, but I haven't talked to him in a long, long time. Uh, what do I do today? What kind of music I do today? For the most part, it's house music. Um, I feel like right now is a good time to switch the camera. Right now is a good time to tell you why I made this song. Because yes, as you guys all know, 
I was an Engine Beats producer for a long time until 2000. Uh, I don't remember 2014 or 2015, and then I uh, and then I started making EDM stuff, and a lot of people said that I sold out, which I didn't. But anyway, uh, so the reason uh, the reason I left. First of all, was because before being a producer, I am a sound designer. I'm a sound enthusiast. I love music. I love every kind of music. And to me, to be stuck doing one thing and one thing only, it's a horrible torture. I love Angina Beats. And I think Angina Beats is the best trans label in the world and releases some of the best music that's out there. But um, at the same time, I am, I am a music lover. So if I hear something that, I, that get, gets me excited, if I hear a new sound that gets me excited, I want to make that sound. And uh, some people say that I jump on trends, but to me, it's really not that. Because, I mean, I pay my bills with, my sound design stuff that's how i make money that's how i pay my bills that's that's what i do for a living that's my uh my full-time job i do sounds i do um mixing mastering service uh, I, I do consulting for companies that releases new synthesizer and and software and all that kind of stuff music for me is still a passion i don't make money off of music i mean a little money but not crazy money for me to do trends or house or other stuff it's not jumping on a trend because i selling out it's just passion i just i just get so excited i'm kind of a very add guy and you know if if there's a new type of music that gets me excited uh, i'm gonna wake up and gonna be like damn i want to try and and sometimes i try and i fail and sometimes i try and i do stuff that people like and labels like and so I release that kind of stuff so the reason why I came back to Anjuna Beats and, and by the way right now I'm very very happy with what's happening to me in my uh, EDM career last year my song with Tiesto my frequency was the second most played song of the year on 1001 tracklist which is huge I never would have expected something like that i mean second most played song that's that's ridiculous um and i i have a lot of fun making that music i have a lot of fun making house music and do like quirky sounds and and all that stuff but i had a lot of fun making this song as well uh so the reason why i came back is simple 2020 was kind of a shitty year right i mean we can all agree on that and uh for me, however, it was pretty good because because I got to get back to uh, you know talking to some people that I haven't talked to because a lot of people hit me up because I'm, I'm I live in Italy right and in Italy we were we we got this whole pandemic thing pretty hard and so a lot of people hit me up asked me if I was if I was doing okay if my family was okay and among these people Jono hit me up and. We started talking. The UK was the second most hit uh, country in Europe, although now it's technically not Europe. Um, but but basically, yeah, Jono and I started talking a lot about what was going on with the situation, and and then we started, you know, just chatting about other stuff. And we discovered that we have a lot, a lot, a lot of things in common. We have a lot of passions in common that are not necessarily about music. And so we started like talking on WhatsApp sometimes for hours, like six hours a day. And, uh, and you know, talking to Jono made me miss Anjuna Beats a little bit. It made me miss, you know, just sending a song to Jono and be like, hey, what do you think of this? And what do you think of that? And uh, nerding around with him. Jono and I have always been pretty close. We just have common interests. So we've always been very good friends. And talking to him made me miss Anjuna Beats a lot. And then, turns out, it was the 20th anniversary of Anjuna Beats. And I was like, 
you know, it would be pretty cool if I would come back. And I wasn't talking to Jono about this. It's not that he pushed me into like making music for Anjuna Beats again. We were just talking. And then I started seeing all this like 20 years of Anjuna Beats thing. And I was like, you know what? It'd be, it'd be just cool if I, if I go back and make a song on Anjuna Beats. And one day I was like walking around and I had this like idea for the, for the intro of the, of the song, the bomb, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba that thing. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And I sat down and I made the intro and, and I texted John right away and I was like, I actually started an Anjuna Beat song. And he's like, oh, that's, that's really cool. I can't wait to hear it. And I was like, yeah, but I have no idea what to do in the breakdown and, and the melody and stuff. So, so I don't know. It might just be a loop that never leaves my computer. And then I, uh, I had this thing. Uh, get it? I, ha I had just bought this, um, what are you doing Zelda? I had just bought this uh, Roland JP-08 and I was at, this has batteries, right? So you can just like play uh, around the house without having it plugged in anywhere. And uh, I was just laying in bed and I was just like jamming with this thing and I found the chords for uh of the song and i just played the chords and i was like oh this is super cool and i recorded me playing the chords with the phone and uh and then the day after i recorded the, the chords and and i made the entire song and uh so yes yeah, so this is why i came back to anjuna beats i felt like it was a cool thing for me to do it to honor the label because it's been 20 years and because for me anjuna beats has been possibly the most important part of my career even if i had bigger achievement with other things um and i have way more plays with other songs that are not on Gina beats i am where i am because of Gina beats and i never forgotten this i never renegade and you know abandon my roots i know where i come from and i've always I'll always be grateful for what Anjuna Beats has done to, for me, what the fans have done for me. So this song was a way to honor uh, Anjuna Beats, to honor, to celebrate the 20 years, to celebrate my friendship with Jono. And, uh, and yeah, it was a fun track for me to make. And, and yeah, so big parenthesis, but I felt like uh, it, I, needed to, I needed to talk about the concept of the song as well. Uh, make whatever music you want. I don't know why people get mad when people get evolved their sound. Dude, I have no idea either, but uh, some people get it very, uh, they get very attached to it. Love your music. Thank you so much. Can you talk a little bit about your full-time job and how it affects your music production? Uh, my full-time job basically is a way for me to feel less bad when i'm not inspired to make music um so basically what i normally do is i try to make music every day but it doesn't always come right uh, especially uh, i'm not a very easily inspired guy um it's, it's very hard for me to come up with ideas and especially it's very hard for me to like what i do so in order not to feel bad at some point in my life i was like all right i need to find a way to make a living uh if i can't get the right idea or if i'm slow with releasing music and i've always been pretty good at designing sounds and so that's why i make sounds so my dream what i love to do is making music uh i obviously love making preset i mean at the end of the day i work in music full time and i am so grateful for that if if you would ask me okay you can choose whether you want to be a DJ and make music full-time or be a sound designer full-time, I will always be making music and be a DJ full-time over making sounds. Thing is, I once again, I have a bigger business with sounds. I am better at making sounds. So in a way, my sound design comes first compared to my production. Uh, but yes, uh, basically what I do is I just open serum or open whatever and i make sounds and it's it's a lot of fun don't get me wrong it's just just not as fun as making music and play it around the world 
Who is Zelda? I have a dog named Zelda. Zelda is Zelda is my husky. All right, let me just let me just grab her. She's gonna be so pissed, but let me just grab her. One second. Say hi to people, Zelda. It's like she's sleeping. She's my beautiful husky, right? Mm. Yeah, she she has her little bat over there. She's just sleeping. Now she hates me. But yeah. I adopted her I I adopted her almost a year ago. And yeah, she's my little baby. Alright. Back to your bed. Cool, guys. I think I am oh, we still have like 30 minutes. Uh, and there's still so much to say about this song. So I am going to go back to the song and talk about the pads. Because the pads, the pads, the pads, it's all in the pads. Guys, the pads in this song are dope. So we have three layers. We have one that's from my, uh, that's from my JP. And it's in Get Low. Now, this particular sound is not available yet. It will be available in a future expansion but if you're looking for this particular pad and you have get low you are not gonna have this preset anywhere this is seven skies exclusive right now and this is how it sounds <laughs> Obviously, open cutoff and all that kind of stuff. So, super beautiful pad, but even more beautiful is this Jupiter pad that comes from the uh, Roland Jupiter that I showed you before. And this sounds, ah, oh, this sounds so beautiful. Too bad it's audio. I mean, I, I couldn't show you anyway because it's a hardware, but yes. I just want to play it all because it's too nice. I love that sound. It's probably one of the best pet I've ever made. Uh, then we have a Juno. Juno is uh, this thing over here. This one. Still love this thing. I actually really like this um, boutique edition of the of the Roland stuff super cool I really like this stuff very very funny to play with very I don't know it's just like it's fun um, so the Juno it's a brighter pad it just gives a yeah it's definitely like a brighter sound to it you'll hear what I mean A little more, yeah, just brighter and more dreamy in a way because it goes like, Chew. it does this like sweepy thing. And if I play the entire thing, this is how it sounds. Uh, a couple thing going on here, which is, uh, if you are, if you've been looking at the stream from like the start, 
you heard this before there's this like stadium clap stuff that really goes super well with the entire breakdown and the pads uh, which is this And if I play the whole thing with the pads. Another thing, which is the main melody. The first time we hear the main melody is with this piano. And this piano, it's the same piano that I've used in pretty much all my Anjuna Beat song. I think, I'm not entirely sure, but I think Caffeine was the Logic EXS24 default piano. But everything after that song, it was this piano, which is Alicia Keys. Super dope. I love it. It's old, but it's the best piano out there. And this is how it sounds. Yeah, I love this piano. Best piano ever. Uh, I hope the audio is still fine. I'm seeing that there are some um, issues still with the stream. Some frames are dropping. Although we're almost done. The last thing we need to look at is the main melody. And then we good. Actually, there's, there's the main melody synth and the main melody arp. Now the main melody synth is one silent and one juno 106 again and this is how they sound i'm just gonna play the different layers this is the silent layer if you want to check how this the preset is i mean it's not a preset it's just an init sound that i tweaked and this is how it sounds I just want it, the sound to be a little broken, so it has a, an LFO on the pitch, so it makes it drift uh, a little bit. And I wanted it to sort of sound like a Blade Runner 80s thing. Um, and that's also why I used the Juno in the second layer. It's very similar. It's a very similar sound, just, just more Roland sounding. That's, that's about it. Obviously the most important, the most important one is the silent one. Cause it's more like in your face. Uh, but the Juno adds a very nice vibe to it. And, um, and yeah, I just love this song. It's super nice. Very, very important thing on this song is also the ARP lead, which is not the ARP pluck, different thing. Uh, it's basically just playing the chords and arpeggiating uh, whatever notes are in there. Classic, super trancey arp sound. And uh, it's once again from Silent. Yeah, I was, going, I was like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use Silent for this song. Uh, once again, just init preset. Very simple stuff. Has two layers. Um, and I'm going to explain a little bit on what's going on because there's a lot going on in this one. Uh, but let me play it first and then I'm just going to explain what's going on.
very trancy, incredibly trancy. A couple things that, actually, a lot of things that goes on with the uh, with this uh, with this sound. Now, most basic stuff: filter cutoff that opens, and then you see here uh, there's th uh, two more uh, automations going on uh, when it comes to the silent part, and one is the amount of cutoff that's being modulated by envelope 2. If you hear the sound at the beginning, it's very, very, very clicky. Let me just play it again. You hear how it's like, it's, it pops a lot. Uh, and that's controlled by this envelope over here. So if I click this, all right, yes, that's, what, that's the one. If you see here, as the cutoff opens, the clickiness goes down a little bit because it started to be really annoying because the filter was opening up and so the click would become even more noticeable because more high frequency were passing through. And also the other layers started opening up and so those clicks started summing with the other layer and that became very messy and that's why it's automated. Uh, but that's just, mixing uh the very important thing happens over here with the oscillator 2 volume and you see it here uh now oscillator 2 it's the same sound but an octave higher which is over here and when it starts it's turned all the way down so you don't hear it but as the song sort of explodes so that's this part of the song is where is where I give you everything, right? You get the pad. I'm, I'm like, it's the opera time of the song. You get the pad. You get the arp lead. You get the melody lead. You get everything in that part. So what happens is to make it even more... I'm going to pull a carnage here. To make it even way more better and louder and awesomer, I also turn up the oscillator too. And I do it in a very sudden way. It's not, you see here, it's like, boom. You see the automation. It doesn't fade in or anything. At one minute is not there and the minute after is like, boom, all the way up. And this is how it sounds. It's as if I am putting in a new layer, but it's just, it's not a new layer, it's just a new oscillator. The other thing that I do, very important to sort of help this like explosion uh, of sound, you see here, the filter doesn't open up smoothly at the end. It's once again, a big step. So it opens a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and then boom, full open. Normally, you would do something like this, right? So the filter is super smooth, and then at this point, it's all the way up. But if you do that, sometimes it works, but you don't get that explosion where everything just happens. It's smooth, but it's not sudden. And especially in, in a part like this, where just everything comes in, you want to make that as big as you can. And, you know, by doing stuff like this, you, you get way more impact you get a very sudden and very big and dramatic transition, which is, uh, which works amazing in this, uh, in this part of the song. Then over here, there's a lot of stuff going on, especially with this synth again. Uh, as the build comes in, the filter goes all the way down. Once again, super sudden. And then it starts to build up and the frequency shifter comes in. And also the oscillator too. There's a lot of stuff going on here. So once again, filter closes super suddenly Oscillator 2 goes down super suddenly and then they start to come back up again. And here they're a little bit more smooth, right? So there's no gap like you, you can see here. 
but also you have the frequency shifter that sort of acts like a pitch shifter but it's weird and this is why i use it a lot i use it a hell of a lot yeah i just think that this part gives so much energy with the whole build and everything coming up like the bass the bass starts to pump and then you have like all the snare the donks getting bigger everything is just like building so well the other juno melody arp uh lead arp sorry it's it's cool but it's just not that cool I mean, it's not as cool uh, i can play it for you but it's just really a background that sort of helps filling up the entire spectrum but yeah, the the sauce is is the silent uh, layer so let me just play this as well So you hear this one is way smoother it's not as aggressive as the other one uh is frequency shifter and ableton default yes it is it's dope i use it all the time doesn't the frequency shifter throw notes out of the key it absolutely does and that's what i want i just want this thing to be absolutely mangled and nonsense and uh and yeah it's it, that's why it's there uh let me play it again so you can hear, but yes, it, it puts stuff out of key, but that's what I want. The thing is, you can tell that stuff gets wonky and out of key when the thing is in solo, but when you're playing it in the mix, it just sounds like a build, like something that's pitching up. But it's pitching up in a weird way, so it's kind of it kind of sounds broken but cool. It's I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. It's just it's just really cool. Ah, uh, let me put the donk as well. So. Right? So you can tell that there's something that's kind of going out of key, but at the same time, it makes sense because everything is just going up and building. Now, there's, there's a very funny sound in the first kick in the drop, which is this. Which is a super subby sound, and it hits at the same time as the kick. Uh, now, the kick is in solo basically when the drop comes in right there's nothing there's only kick and uh that's it and so i added this sound just to just to put something cool and this is how it sounds so you get this like and then you get the super gnarly bass adds coolness to 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 the entire thing which is already like pretty nasty that's pretty much it that's the entire song guys it took two hours but uh but we made it this is how this is how zao was made little bonus <laughs> this this requires full cam uh title who can guess what the title is i'm pretty sure nobody can guess what the title is uh zao doesn't mean anything it does sound like a asian thing i guess which i kind of like i kind of like the fact that it just sounds like i don't know like one of those like spiritual thing like i don't know it just gives me that idea i don't i don't know if it's just me the title it's nothing but ciao how we say it in italian right ciao uh but there's a friend of mine who's from a different part of italy and they zoidbergate orange Oh, we have Futurama fan over here. I'm, I'm a massive Futurama fan. Uh, my friend is from a different part of Italy. And he speaks in a funny way. So everything that has the ch sound, he says it, he pronounces it with z. So 
when he says ciao, he actually says ciao. And uh, we always make fun of him. So in a way, this title is super mean because it's a public and worldwide way to shame him. <laughs> but, uh, but it's also funny. He, he, didn't, he didn't care. He, he thought it was super funny. Uh, but yes, basically, this is just a way to make fun of my friend on a very, very large scale. Because we, we usually make fun of him like it's just me and my group of friends. And uh, yeah, so I figured this was a you know better way to make fun of him. It's definitely a bigger scale. The actual title, if you see... If you see here, if you see on the um, on the screen, it says Seven Skies Zhao release, and then it says Daddy's Home. Now, this was the actual title of the song. Daddy's Home was the actual title of the song. But I sent it to Anjuna Beats, and their answer was like, there is no way we're going to release a song that's called Daddy's Home. And I was like, please. And they were like, yeah, no, there's no way. You either change the title or we're not going to release the song. Which, I mean, I get it, but it would have been amazing if the song was called Daddy's Home. Because, I mean, at the end, Daddy's Home. Guys, Zhao is out now. If you haven't streamed it yet, check it out on my Spotify or Apple Music or Beatport or YouTube or whatever. And uh, I hope you learned something new. I hope you loved this um, live stream. And for me and Zelda, who is sleeping and does, does not give a shit about any of us. Thank you so much. Stay safe. From me, David, Seven Skies. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time. Love you guys. Bye-bye.